Let's look into more factors that affect how quickly the liver can clear drug from the body using the well-stirred model. This time we're going to explore hepatic blood flow. In the equation it's represented by Q sub H. Normally about 1500 milliliters of blood flows through the liver every minute. Unfortunately there really isn't an easy way to directly measure hepatic blood flow. There are techniques involving tracer substances injected into the blood or ultrasound scans, but they're used more for research than for day-to-day -day practice. So the pharmacist is usually left trying to anticipate possible problems based on the patient's condition. There are various disease states that can reduce blood flow. We have to consider them when deciding on doses for our patients. In what situations would hepatic blood flow decrease? One common situation is congestive heart failure. In heart failure, the heart is not pumping as efficiently. Less blood is being pushed out of the left ventricle with each beat. This leads to lower blood flow throughout much of the body, including the liver. A patient who suffers a massive myocardial infarction may have a significant drop in cardiac output. The heart might be damaged enough that it can't pump enough blood to perfuse the patient's organs. This is called shock and the liver suffers low blood flow along with the rest of the body. Chronic liver disease can cause reduced blood flow. Now this time it's not because the heart isn't pumping the blood enough it's that the liver is resisting the flow of blood into the organ. Viral hepatitis or chronic alcoholism can cause cirrhosis of the liver. The liver tissue becomes fibrotic and may actually shunt the blood that's coming towards it away from the liver. Sometimes this resistance causes blood to back up so much that it gets forced into smaller veins in other parts of the body that aren't accustomed to so much pressure. These veins sometimes swell and burst, leading to bleeding. The veins in the lower esophagus are particularly affected by this process, leading to a condition called esophageal varices. The patient with esophageal varices may present vomiting blood or with black tarry stools. Lidocaine has a high extraction ratio, which means that the hepatic clearance is highly dependent on how quickly the blood can get the drug into the liver. Most of you are familiar with lidocaine as a local anesthetic. If you've ever had a dentist numb your gum, lidocaine is most likely what they used. In much larger doses, however, and given intravenously, we use lidocaine to control heart rhythms. What do we do when we suspect our patient on lidocaine has low hepatic blood flow? If we look at the package insert for lidocaine injection, it tells us that because of the rapid rate at which lidocaine is metabolized, any condition that alters liver function, including changes in liver blood flow, which could result from a congestive heart failure or shock, may alter lidocaine kinetics. That's nice to know, but the package insert doesn't tell us how much to change the dose in patients with CHF or shock. Do we change it a little? A lot? The problem is that there really isn't an official answer. Some sources might recommend that you decrease the dose 25 to 50 percent. Others might stress the importance of checking serum concentrations. And since we don't have a really good way of directly measuring hepatic blood flow, we'd be guessing anyway. This often frustrates pharmacy students because it seems like there should be a correct answer. But many sources, like the package insert, just suggest something along the lines of be extra careful. So when should we be extra careful? If the drug has a high extraction ratio and thus deliver a high intrinsic clearance, if the patient has some disease state that would reduce the amount of blood flowing through the liver, if it's a drug with a narrow therapeutic index and significant toxicities that might occur if the serum concentrations get too high.